Precast concrete box culverts are really rather simple structures, as you may guess by the, the rather simple cross-section of the, of the culvert itself. Box culverts, the purpose of a box culvert essentially, is to allow for a span over this void. So essentially, it needs to carry any load that's applied above the culvert over that span. That load needs to be transferred down to the ground ultimately. So the vertical load that would be applied to the top slab of our culvert, that load will need to pass through the walls of the culvert down into the base slab of the culvert and then into the bearing surface, the bearing material below the bottom surface of the culvert. Now, despite the simple appearance of it, the actual loads that are applied to the box culvert and the combination of those loads can get a little bit awkward. It can get a little bit complicated, at least for your first one or two box culvert designs. Not only is that vertical load applied to the top slab of the culvert, but we would also have earth pressure that's applied to the box culvert. Box culverts will be buried, far typically, in the vast majority of cases, this box culvert would be buried. So that earth pressure on either side of the walls of our box culvert will also apply a force, a pressure, to the, uh, to the side faces, the walls of the culvert itself. Also, because we do have the bottom slab of the culvert, we will get a bearing pressure applied by the bearing surface onto that bottom slab of the culvert as well, too. Now, all of these applications of load and pressure, essentially, will result in the development of bending moment and of shear throughout the culvert. Now, this bending moment and shear profile can get a little bit more complicated than a simply supported single span beam or something, the structure of that nature. We would develop sagging moments at the mid-span of the top slab of the culvert. So essentially this bottom face of that top slab of the culvert is going to go into tension. Top face into compression as a result of that bending moment. Now we would get a hogging moment at the ends of the culvert, around the corner of our culvert that moment switches over to a hogging moment. A hogging moment puts tension into the top face, compression into the bottom face of the slab of the culvert. Similar situation will exist with the walls as well too. Typically there will be certain loads and combination of loads that will result in a sagging moment, i.e. tension in the inside face of the walls, compression in the outside face. And similar with the bottom slab as well too. Now, as with any reinforced concrete type structure, we deal with the tension that develops as a result of flexure by using steel reinforcement. Okay, so we'll put that steel reinforcement into the tension face of our concrete to pick up the tension and to provide that moment capacity that we need to accommodate that bending moment that will develop at all different points throughout the cross-section of our culvert. Also, we must design the culvert for shear as well, too. The culvert also, box culvert also works with regard to shear as well. In many cases, we are able to accommodate the shear that develops in the slab and in the wall of a box culvert simply with the longitudinal reinforcement, the actual reinforcing bars that we are principally using to accommodate the bending moment. However, there are situations now when, particularly when we start to deal with large culverts, where the thickness of the slab will be increasing a bit, where we will actually use shear links within the slab or within the wall potentially as well too for the culvert.